good evening good evening all of you thank you for joining on the weekday uh, we know that uh, some of you may have been working and uh, have started joining this webinar now uh, so thank you first of all all of you uh, so good evening and welcome you all to the webinar of this 77th webinar of this webinar series and uh, just a second so uh, for the as i said uh, this is the seventh webinar and uh, indicrans have been conducting a webinar series from last several months and uh, this webinar series is all about the real use cases and practical demonstration of the existing and newly developed functionalities of erp next for past 14 years indicrans have been working with uh, erp next at the various do business domains and have worked with 400 plus clients across the various so so uh, while working with uh, the clients uh, we face multiple questions from our client uh, regarding the implementation implementation strategies uh, how uh, they are going to how we are going to implement for them and uh, uh what uh, right which erp is right or the how it can be helpful for them so uh, when an organization try to implement an erp uh, they face multiple challenges and uh, based on those scenarios to, uh, so today's webinar will be conducted and uh, so we decided to conduct this webinar as uh, ma many customers at uh, many uh, are functional consultant as well uh, have been asking us that uh, let's take a webinar on this and so today's webinar will be conducted by our expert uh, archal dote uh, she is the business analyst and a pre sales team member uh, and have been working with indictrans uh, for last several years and she have been working on various other erps earlier to the erp next so she have a knowledge of many erps and they, in core she have a knowledge of a erp nix in core so uh, achar will cover the various topic under this uh, webinar series and uh, webinar and uh, so let me introduce you to achar and uh, as i said achar has been working with indictrans for the last several years and she have been working as a business analyst as well as a pre sales and she have been working with clients from the starting of the demo and starting of the project or the basic of the demonstration of our erp so uh, i will not take your much time and uh, will hand over this webinar to uh, archal so you can start archal and uh, welcome to this board thank you tejas for the amazing introduction and uh, welcome everyone for this webinar so um, tejas uh, can i share my screen let me share my screen yeah. now you can share screen yeah please confirm if my screen is visible yes uh, your screen is visible now okay so hello everyone so let's start with the webinar today so my topic today is essential strategies for successful erp next implementation so as they just told uh, uh they just told us right now that many customers have been facing uh, challenges in implementation even similar cases with the uh, implementation partner as well so uh, those who are new into erp next implementation and uh, for those customers who are also new into the erp uh, Uh, i mean uh, implementation those who want to implement erp newly or maybe want to transition from one erp to another erp so what key strategies or maybe what key factors need to be considered in uh, erp next implementation that we are going to discuss today so let me stop my video for just better connectivity and let's jump to the presentation my presentation is still visible tejas right can anyone confirm yes yes it is visible no great uh just try to move the screens so that we can confirm if these screens 
Uh, yeah, now it is. Yes, yes. Great. So uh, today's agenda for my presentation is we are going to cover the key factors and the critical aspects for successful ERP text implementation. Some of the best practices and uh, key, uh, key strategies that you can follow in each phases of e implementation. And uh, similarly, we are going to discuss the uh, what leads to failure, what leads to success, and some key tips uh, around the implementation strategies. So uh, ERP system can be extremely complex, uh, ha can have a huge budget, uh, which comes with the recurring license cost and uh, continuous support and maintenance cost. Lots of commitment is required from implementation partner as well as from the customer. And uh, it will take high turnaround time for an ERP to be successful as well as to be stable in an organization. Similarly, it uh, needs a lots of training for the end user. Uh, whereas ERP Next is an open source platform, it uh, it comes with no license fee. There is no product fee at, uh, at all, and there is no vendor lock-in as well. So the dependency on the vendor is low. Similarly, it is easy to use software. Uh, then uh, it is the system is very responsive in nature. So there is no need of mobile application altogether, or to develop a new mobile application. Then uh, it is uh, there is uh, as I told you that there is no recurring fees, so low maintenance, low recurring cost, cost effective, and easy to customize uh, because it is built on a framework called as Frappe framework, which is a low code no code platform. So with all these factors of ERP Next uh, itself, uh, it, it is an easy to use or easy to implement kind of a software. But then after all, why this? Uh, like some of the ERPNX implementation fails and how we can overcome and implement ERPNX successfully that we are going to discuss in today's webinar. So an ERPNX uh, implementation like any ERP uh, touches every area of an organization, like cutting across functional boundaries and departments, as well as impacting the extended enterprises. So this presentation will comprise a collection of several key strategies that we are going to discuss. So first of all, let's discuss about the factors which will contribute to a successful ERP Next projects. So some of the key factors that I would like to highlight before we'll move to the detailed discussion. First is the user involvement in need assessment. So when we say about the need assessment, that means a requirement gathering stage, or maybe into the pre-sales stage itself. So in that phase, uh, from the company side, from the client side, the stakeholders or the process owners need to be involved so they can um, tell their requirements uh, they can communicate their thoughts uh, and as an implementation uh, partner we have to involve our consultants maybe some technical team or maybe a person who is well equipped so that person can uh, understand their requirements and map with the erp next functionality so that need assessment is very much crucial then the data quality and the migration part. So when we are giving a data as a company, so that data quality should be very optimum so that the ERP Next implementer should identify, should uh, map easily with the ERP Next templates. And as an ERP Next implementer, we have to follow the uh, template data set that they are giving. Maybe some gaps would be there in the form. So we have to customize the form first and then download the template so that the relevant fields will be visible for uh, the part, uh, company so they can fill their data and you will get a quality data in hand then the stakeholders communication is very much important so identifying the champion from the client side similarly from the implementer side and uh, which will help to streamline the communication throughout the implementation phase communication should be very crisp and very clear uh, it should be through various channels. We have to find the channels and ways to communicate with each other. Maybe a, a formals, not informal, like avoid phone calls, frequent phone calls, take all the communications on email chain, maybe uh, open a decision log. You can use Slack, Teams, or um, some Telegram channels to communicate all such issues and for quick or stakeholders communication. Then customizations, change management, and flexibility in adoption so that is very important so avoid customization in the start and then move to the customization phase slowly similarly we have to address the change management in the organization because erp is a policy decision of an organization and uh, that 
needs to be addressed and that need to be um, uh, communicated well to the users of an organization. That change is going to happen and you have to adapt to this. Uh, then last, that is tech, uh, testing and quality assurance and continuous review on into the implementation phase of uh, even after the post implementation phase. So uh, essential strategies during key phases of implementation. So three key phases are there. First is pre-implementation. Second is implementation. And third is the post-implementation phase. So I'll cover most of the points which we need to consider during these phases to lead a successful ERP next implementation. So during pre-implementation phase, or we can say it as a before the kick off the project before we hand over to the uh, operations team. So we have to uh, understand and we have to follow these key points. We have to um, select a champion first, uh, as I told you, that from client side and similarly from the implementer side as well. So champion is uh, the person who drives the ERP next from customer side, the person who knows the business processes, everything, and uh, who is keen on learning ERP next. After go live, that person will take over uh, from the implementation partner. Preferably, like uh, that person should be mid senior role, having some authority that like uh, maybe operations manager, IT man manager, or some um, CTO or technical manager, preferably. So that person should be selected as a champion from customer side. Similarly, from the uh, implementation side, implementation partner side, a consultant who is a, uh, capable of understanding the business needs that need to be selected. Then decision on the hosting environment. So that is the key factor that need to be considered in ERP Next specifically, because there is uh, a platform that is readily available for ERP Next that is we called as Frappe Cloud. So this service is provided by Frappe uh, Technologies itself, and it is meant to be for ERP Next pre-configured. So the setup time will be less and a smooth maintenance will be there going ahead. Uh, scalability option is very uh, easy mm -hmm. and um, definitely it is uh, come it comes with the product warranty as well. So the code product is ensured uh, ensured with the Frappe team. So that is a case that you need to select. And if you are on different cloud, then again, the setup time will increase the pre-configured apps which we'll need to set up that will lead to a delay. And uh, again, if delay is there, so pro project will get started uh, on not on time. And then we have to again uh, shift all the sessions ahead. Then uh, main uh, during the requirement stage or during the requirement gathering stage before implementation, there are four important points that we need to consider. That is current state analysis or a current process uh, analysis. So we have to understand and document everything from the business processes compre uh, comprehensively on a document, which is called as a BRD, or in some organization, it is called as a functional requirement document, FRD or SRD as well, solution requirement document. So try to document all the business processes in a uh, well format. Similarly, from client side, they have to be uh, I mean, they must give their requirements in a proper format. If possible, draw a flow chart. Uh, it could be an off by hand, free hand, anything. So try to give more details on print formats, on reporting. Beforehand, we start the implementation. Then identify the pain points. So during the requirement stages, during the um, understanding on analysis stages, we have to identify the pain points. So at every stages, every processes, we have to highlight it. And we have to uh, prioritize those points during the implementation. Then define the future state. That means a to-be process. Uh, so we have to clearly outline the desired future state processes, identifying and highlighting the pain points, that how these pain points will be addressed. If required, any customization. So that customization also we need to highlight in that particular document. So this complete document need to be sent to the customer before we start with the actual implementation. So this will be an official like guideline or a, a proper document where the solutions or the requirements will be freeze out. So this will remove or this will lead to less, uh, what we can say, surprises going ahead, like in the scope. Similarly, it could be a uh, like you will, all, uh, as a client, you can also 
plan your budgets, plan your project finances accordingly. Then uh, the main key phase, that is implementation phase. So during implementation, we have to follow this key uh, strategies, or maybe we have to consider these points, that is data migration strategies. We have to uh, give the user training and adoption. We have to focus more on continuous communication throughout the project, testing and quality assurance, the cutoff strategy, and the project governance. So let's discuss these points in detail. So data migration strategies. Uh, uh, so data migration is the joint responsibility of a partner as well as the company or the customer. Uh, so data cleansing is the main key responsibility from the side because they understand their data best. So extraction and the transformation, ETL, so and loading. So the extraction trans uh, transformation, that is data cleansing, is key responsibility of client. Definitely, implementation partner can be involved in those phases. We have to give the data in a required quality. Then second is the data mapping. So this data need to be mapped with the corresponding field uh, if at all required. So we have to um, map those fields in the existing doc type of ERP next. And then we have to give the template to the customer. So the data quality will be good. So this data mapping is a key responsibility of implementation partner with the, definitely the support of uh, customers. Then the data validation. So that is, again, uh, main key responsibility is from client because they have to validate their data. And we have to test uh, that implementation partner has to test from, uh, them, uh, from their side. So this testing and data validation need to be done hand in hand. Both sides, they have to sit and uh, try to test the data. During the uh, before UAT stage, uh, or during the UAT stage, the data should be a sample data. We don't have to migrate all the master data at a time. So during transition, that is go live only. When we are ready to go live, then only the complete master data, opening data need to be migrated. So you'll get a complete uh, like two, three months of time to capture all the data, to segregate, and to clean uh, the data to move into the new system. But before that, the testing, training, everything should be on a sample data. Then user training and adoption. So that is the main factor that we need to consider because some like functional gaps, if it is there, because ERP Next is pre-configured with some business flows. They, uh, it have all the required tools like workflow tool, automation uh, requirements, uh, like the assignment tool. We have a put away rule. We have a trans, a tax rules. We have a pricing rule. So all such work, uh, what we can say, automation tools are. Hello. Yeah. Yes. 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 So there are pre-configured tools uh, that are that are readily available to automate the complete system. But uh, some of the functional gaps can be identified at that stage only. So it will again remove uh, or reduce the time of user adaptability during the key phases like a training phase or maybe post-implementation functional support phase. So we have to develop a detailed training plan and uh, which will cover all the user roles from each department, from every functionalities. We have to cover uh, the complete training. Then hands-on training is very much required. Uh, if the system is new or the company is entering, uh, is completely new for an ERP system, so they must know what is ERP and how we can uh, move from the manual, uh, you know, uh, what we can say, manual work to a automated work through the system. So that is why we have to identify which user will require a hands-on training or which user is already well equipped with the ERP knowledge and they are um, OK with the key user training kind of a phases. So that we need to identify. Similarly, some resources we can provide, like uh, recorded sessions, keep every demo or uh, what we can say training sessions recorded and that need to be provided, create user manuals, create uh, release notes, document, uh, documents, and any online resources that we can provide 
to re reduce the online uh, reduce the training time reduce the training curve similarly for an user for an end user they will have a ready made uh, what we can say resources to um, refer in future rather than coming to implementation partner for training then user feedback is also necessary we have to encourage users to give feedback timely feedback and as a user we have to give the timely feedback of course because uh, it will again um, like whenever we are giving a feedback that need to be incorporated quickly so that the turnaround time will again gradually will get reduced then post launch support or we can say it as a go live support so that is also important so after uh, go live hand in hand support is also required so we uh, into our organization we generally follow a process that means during um like let's say we are moving into the uat phase and we are just about to transition to the go live we start to involve our support team so we call it as a hyper care support so it will give them a time like minimum four to five weeks of time to adapt uh the uh, as a user to adapt the software uh and similarly from our side the hyper care team is not nothing uh no one but the support team who will be working on the maintenance side going ahead if you will purchase the amc so that same team will be involved so they will also come to know the business uh, process and they can adapt to the uh, your functionalities that has been customized that has been developed as per company's requirement so that is why this hyper care support is very much required and need to be provided uh, during the go live phase then continuous communication throughout the project is very much required because stakeholder engagement like i told you before about the open communication channels like uh, it could be for issue resolution or it could be for feedback or anything then project updates need to be given timely project updates a tracker can be made or a platform where which can be shared with the client so they will have a transparency in the status of project what is the uh, like they any time they can see what is the status of this module release what is the status of the uat release what is the status of the go live so continuous changes what we are going to do in the project tracker that should be visible to the client as well so uh, change management that is the important part that need to be addressed from the client side that uh, uh, if the erp is new in the company uh, so they must inform to the uh, what we can say users that change is going to happen and that change need to be identified they have to address the users anxiety the they have to identify some of the strategies or some of the ways to um, encourage users to use the system we have to incentivize or maybe um, what we can say recognize their uh, uh, fear factors anything so we have to address that and uh, proactively and communicate basically and uh, try to foster a positive attitude towards the new system then testing and quality assurance so at every stages of uh, implementation whether it is a, a uat testing whether it is a release whether it is a um, what we can say requirement side or maybe at the data migration stage testing and quality assurance is very much needed so test scenarios can be uh, given by the implementation partner so at every phases let's say you are implementing you are from manufacturing or distribution business so p2p cycle order to cash cycle or maybe inventory management so all these processes can be uh, identified and some test scenarios can be developed and uh, same testing sheets can be maintained from uh, implementation partner as well as from the customer side so it will give them a proof that this process has been tested tried and tested then user acceptance testing need to be encouraged from the end user and they have to validate the complete system functionality and timely feedback is very much required in smooth transition and quick uh, implementation then performance testing is also required for the system so these first two that is test scenarios user acceptance testing is uh, for functional training but for the technical testing for the quality assurance the performance and bug tracking is very much required so that need to be ensured by the uh, implementation partner if uh, we are providing the cloud services 
and or if the cloud service provider with maybe you are not on cloud or uh, frappe cloud but other cloud they have to perform the uh, the you know the cloud uh, server testing that need to be ensured the uptime downtime that need to be ensured and performance testing bug testing that need to be ensured by the implementation part the cutoff strategy is also uh, very much important with confidence in the new system through testing team develops a strategy to seize using the old processes and system so if you are transitioning from one system to another system so we have to go with the strategy uh, we have to move to the uh, new system gradually simultaneously not all users need to be migrate some phase wise approach can be uh, ad adapted and uh, for new system to basically like in um, uh, major cases uh, accounting system so that is a, a main um, pain points that we have addressed in all our implementations that accounting team is not very much confident to adapt a new system directly so we have to parallelly adopt the new uh, accounting system by keeping the old accounting or maybe old erp uh, simultaneously for a set of time so once they are confident enough to move to the new system then we can gradually stop using the old one so this complete like uh, this transition strategy or cutoff strategy need to be maintained then the project governance is also important project team structure need to be defined by the implementation team similarly from the uh, uh, customer side as well uh, which will have a uh, project managers functional consultants business analyst uh, similarly from the customer side business owners or maybe process owners functionality wise can be identified those key users will be involved in every stage of implementation uh, whether it is a requirement gathering stage or whether it is a uat stage or a demo stage or a fit gap analysis stage so at every stages this team need to be um, uh, together they need to uh, this complete uh, uh, communication should be streamlined with all the stakeholders so to identify this team is very important and it should be uh, there should be a dedicated project manager as well as a uh, functional consultant for every project then risk management is also important at every stage some risk would be there so we have to identify those potential risk and develop a mitigation plan against it so we have to like uh, some of the risk that i can give you the example major risk that means the erp coordinator or from or maybe we can call it as a champion from the client side is leaving the organization those uh, that person is having all the knowledge all the communication that has been done with that person from the client side is leaving the organization and then the new person will come and taking over is very much difficult if that uh, pace will be mapped or not so that we need to identify that person the champion need to be selected carefully that person uh, will uh, should not have a plan to leave the organization minimum for one year till the erp will get settled then user resistance need to be identified at every stages at every phases and every module wise release as well uh, more code level customizations need to be re reduced uh, so this will again lead to a uh, what we can say high maintenance cost similarly on a version upgrade critical at, uh, criticality will come so this risk will need to identify and mitigate accordingly then uh, implementation has been done but post implementation as well it is, uh, we have to uh, address some of the points like a feedback mechanism need to be developed so continuous like uh, timely feedback from client side from implementation side need to be uh, taken uh, uh, after the system is live whether it is running properly or not if there is any bug that need to be communicated to the implementation partner frequently and uh, quickly so they can address the uh, those and uh, then performance metrics need to be identified so to measure the success of the erp next implementation similarly the turnaround uh, sorry the tco or the roi need to be identified based on that to uh, what we can say to uh, <clears throat> to uh, um, invest more into that erp or maybe into the maintenance so that we can identify by this performance metrics then continuous improvement is also required so user feedback performance metrics that 
can drive to a continuous improvement effort, whether it is a cost wise, time wise, or maybe uh, like labor wise or manoeuvre wise. But after all, like considering all these success factors, why implementation fails? So we have followed all these key phases. Everything is you are following with the perfect like phases of implementation you are following. You have identified the project coordinator. You have identified everything. But then uh, after all, why ERP next implementation fails? So there are some failure factors that we need to consider. So first, uh, from the like uh, project, this ERP next implementation or any ERP implementation is not the top priority of the organization. So they consider it as an IT project. So IT team will handle it. So the less involvement from the management side, that will lead to a failure. Because timely involvement, timely feedback, timely governance from the uh, top management is very much required in any ERP implementation because it is a policy that you are going to define and that change is very huge for your organization. That need to be identified at the top level. Then project implementation is rushed. We like uh, right now we are into December and the new financial year we start from uh, April. So many implementation uh, is going to start and that is a very much risk to go live into two to three months with all these functionalities. So if you want to implement an ERP, that need to be addressed way before, like uh, six months before uh, to new financial year. Because to stabilize an ERP, to stabilize an ERP next, uh, again, it isn't user friendly, but still, to stabilize an ERP, it will minimum require four to five months, minimum four to five months. If you are going with any other proprietary software, a complex software, it will require a minimum six to one year, six months to one year time to stabilize. So we don't have to rush the project implementation. Go phase wise. Uh, if you are into rush, go with accounting to maybe procurement uh, cycle implementation or go with some uh, basic modules or some standard module like don't rush into the customization from the start. So then incorrect, incomplete or inaccurate requirements. So as a client, you have to communicate the requirements way before we start with the actual implementation. So that will lead to a complete like a the documented requirements and which will have a detailed sign off or detailed understanding from the customer as well as from the implementation partner. And uh, most important is the Big Bang implementation. So Big Bang implementation, that means like uh, going live with everything at a time. So uh, this decision to pursue a Big Bang implementation is often influenced by the factors such as the first uh, third point that is organization urgency that means the project is rushed uh, for a system wide transformation a desire to quickly realize the benefit or be, be or a belief that the organization can handle the comprehensive change at all at once so these changes these points need to be addressed and uh, try to implement the complete erp with a phased approach one by one go live with certain processes or certain modules so this will reduce the turnaround time. This will fast uh, make the turnaround time faster, and user adaptability will also increase. And some key tips for project success is definitely first focus on the education and handholding to the user. Continuous collaboration with the IT team from uh, the customer as well as from the implementation partner. Then focus on the change management in the organization. Uh, as a client, we have to address those changes and anxiety of the users and try to address their pain points, incentivize or encourage them to use the system, test the system timely, and avoid big bank implementation and adopt a phased or incremental rollout approach. Then uh, with this, like with some final thoughts, I would I will end my presentation. Like uh, a complex project of this magnitude, like deserves careful planning and execution. We have shared these best practices in the hopes that it will help our potential clients, uh, which are like basically from manufacturing, distribution, or any other domain specific, to have a needed insight for an effective ERP implementation.
However, like uh, the best advice we can give you about the ERPNX implementation is simply uh, like uh, don't go it alone. We have our ex uh, experienced ERP consultants in house, and uh, those person like uh, who can tap all the ERP um, like implementation ERP system we can implement faster for you more effectively than the any business professional who are unfamiliar unfamiliar with the uh, ERP implementations. And uh, definitely you are the experts at running your business, but uh, we are the exp uh, experts in helping you to optimize it. So these are my like final thoughts and my some key tips on the strategies that you can follow uh, during the ERP next implementation. And uh, with this note, I would like to end my webinar. If there are any questions or uh, some feedbacks, please feel free to uh, put on those very good uh Achal. so the webinar was very good so everyone you can ask the questions uh, hi Achal. uh this is uh rohit sharma from uh corset uh hello thank Rohit. you so much Thank you so much for such a wonderful insight into the implementation uh, and uh, you know various uh, factors and uh, various conditions that influence the implementation. Uh, I just want to ask you one question. Uh, generally, what I've seen is that uh, people understand that it's an out of the box system. You know, they can do it on their own and. Uh, they feel that it's 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 enough for uh, them to you know try it on their own within their enterprise. So when it comes to uh, medium uh, scale enterprises, I'm, I'm referring to when I say enterprises. So how do you manage such kind of a situation, and and what what do, how do you handle such kind of a sentiment? So the same strategies that I described. So for a small organization who thinks that they can handle their changes on their own, they can handle their exp uh, implementation on their own because their processes are not that uh, very polished or maybe they are new into the system or they are new into the business altogether. So the SOPs are not well defined, but for a mid-level or maybe for an enterprise who are already having a SOPs defined for like several years and uh, the adaptability to new system like maybe we have to use uh they are not uh ready to use as a software so we have to customize the flow as per their requirements but at every stage we try to consult them that this is the uh, best practices that you can follow as per the market uh which uh, maybe by your industry specific market based on our experiences we will try to guide them that uh this process can be defined in such a way. This will give you these benefits. If at all they are not ready, then we we have a flexibility in ERPNX that we can customize the workflow. That is a process flow. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, same. So you have raised the hand. So you can ask the question. Uh, James and Sonali Sharma has raised hands. Yeah, James. Yeah, Sonali, you can go ahead. Uh, I think uh, James has unmuted. Uh, James, if you are trying to say something, you are on mute. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, that was a wonderful presentation. So my question is, uh, what if a company wants to do like... Uh, they want to do an implementation based on specific modules, mm -hmm. not the whole ERP project as a whole. And then something else, maybe, would you mind to share the document that you have used to, present, to do the presentation? That's all. Thank you. Uh, you would like to see the document that we generally follow in our organization? or uh, like, Can you uh, repeat that uh, question again? Not okay. Again. The the first bit was, uh, let's say we have a client who wants to do the ERP implementation, but they okay. say like they want to begin on the accounting bit first of all, before okay. they go into the other, all the other modules. 
So maybe just a word of advice on such. And then uh, the other the other one is not a question actually. Okay, it's still a question. Will you mind uh, sharing the same document that you have used to do the presentation? Sure, uh, we can like uh, share you uh, share some insights, but uh, we cannot share the document directly. But definitely okay. we can come on call uh, maybe sometime later and uh, we can discuss uh, jointly how we can uh, guide you in documenting the requirements correctly and how we can freeze out like uh, level wise like let's say every phase will have some outputs some documents in form like at user training stage user manuals recorded sessions or maybe test cases would be there at requirement gathering stage the brd F uh, frd or maybe srd those documents will be an output so every phases will have some documents output so that we can discuss definitely later on uh, how we can help you uh, to formulate those in a proper document you can okay. uh, contact uh, you can share your email id on maybe this chat box they just will share you an email and we can come on a call and discuss okay thank you thank you Jim. yes sonali you can ask question Okay, uh, I have two questions. So one is regarding uh, the team implementation. You mentioned that uh, team should be uh, properly, uh, uh, you know, defined team project manager, etc. But uh, like normally, uh, I have seen that uh, in uh, more in uh, uh, softwares like uh, SAP, they have separate modules and separate people take care of it. Right. How do you think that? Uh, should be done in ERP next. Do you uh, suggest to have separate uh, team members for separate modules? So generally, uh, see ERP next uh, is a open source software which which have some inbuilt capability to handle some of the domains like manufacturing. We have a set of modules for uh, retail. We have a module for e-commerce for healthcare. We have set of modules readily available. So uh, as an implementer. We have certain team sets. Um, Frappe team are providing certifications for every module, for every functionalities, like whether it is a HR payroll or whether it is a module-wise certification, functional, technical, both. So try to encourage your team to get certified in those aspects. If it is a developer, so they have to be technically certified. If it is a functional consultant, they have to be certified into their um, module-wise uh, interest, whichever module they would like to we get certified for and uh, whenever we are appointing a team to any implementation to any project we have to first identify the modules that means let's say uh, if anyone wants to implement accounting set with the manufacturing set like inventory management uh, selling stock buying everything these are the core modules that are readily available and many people like um, all functional consultants are aware about the functionalities but for some typical module set like for accounting for hr payroll or maybe for any like manufacturing uh, module so the for these kind of modules we can uh, involve some certified consultants from our side into the project whenever is required business analyst implementation engineer or a functional consultant so, so this set of team need to be identified project wise looking towards the complexity and uh, whenever is required so those certified consultants can be involved in the phases so it's not necessary that we will have set of people for module uh, because erp is new uh, into the market sap oracle those are the old players they have their uh, what we can say um, implementation partner in each uh, zone of the country erp next we have uh, like up to like 200 yeah, or 200 plus partners across all the countries, but having some limited team. So we have to plan our team properly to get a proper outcome in uh, into every implementation. OK, and I have one more question. Uh, so basically regarding finance, there is uh, no one actually wants to leave the transactions like old data. If we start in the middle of the year, then there is uh, chances that they won't be agreeing to the uh, to leaving the historical data at least for the previous months how do you handle it so we have to then again uh, define the cutoff strategy cutoff period we need to define so if they are asking for historical data for like past three four years 
because the closed data is only required for the reporting purpose it is not required into day in day out transaction so we have to guide the uh, company or the customers that keep the historical data into a different database server whenever is required for reporting we can fetch the data but uh, for the transactional or the data which is open like master data or the opening entries or a cutover data maybe for last financial year uh, we have to decide the cutoff date and try to migrate that much data only and keep the historical data into a different database because to map the closed data the transactions history everything which will be a ted tedious job as an implementation partner and need to be taken up as a separate project it to, it need to be separated from the implementation project so that is the main like uh, point that you can consider during such um what we can say questions from the customers so uh, currently like it's 27 december maybe we uh, take the cutoff date as first december uh, what about yes. the data of first uh, april to 30th november so that again uh, decide uh, i mean based on the customers we have to guide them that cutoff date can be selected december to april or maybe for last financial year you can migrate the data but for a historical data for like past 3 to 5 years you have to guide them to keep it in a different um, uh, database server or maybe uh, try to uh, guide them to keep the system the old accounting system live for some sort of uh, time period or maybe keep the uat instance at least live for the old erp if at all it is required okay okay thank you so much thank you so much for the answers any more questions so uh, we have also i have also put the contact detail of our contact email address on the uh, chat so if you have any queries you can raise the queries on that uh, email itself so that we will uh, we can we can answer those questions on email itself so uh, i think no more questions so thank you thank you all for joining and thank you achal for this beautiful and uh, very good webinar so thank it was you. very informative and uh, actually it has helped i think many of the uh, who have joined the webinar today so thank you achal and thank you everyone for joining this webinar thank you everyone for the responses thank you so much if you have any questions feel free to share it on chat box or maybe on email thank you so much for joining